Okay, so this uh, is your next assignment in this class. And I'd originally had this listed as HTML and CSS, CSS review. I definitely recommend, as I did last time, that you review chapters one through five. And like I said, one is really important because it's some of what we're going to do continuing this assignment. But the rest of those chapters are really good because they're a CSS and HTML review. And um, I had also thought I might have you complete the first, uh, C the CSS, HTML and CSS and free code camp. But I've decided that really, you know, you know on your own where your CSS and HTML skills are. And really, I will tell you, the, m the more you know about it, the easier JavaScript is going to be. Because everything we do in JavaScript pretty much relates to HTML and CSS. I mean, there's stuff in the base language, but... Anyway, it builds on that technology. So knowing that is really good. So we're just going to step through all the requirements here uh, one at a time. So first I'm going to, and I'm in the Windows environment completely. So for Mac students, right? So you're just in your finder and you're doing some of this and you have your editor open and I'll just show you how I'm going to walk through it. But as long as you get it done, that's the most important thing. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to do this first inside my file explorer. I'm going to go to my documents directory. Uh, this is actually a folder from last semester, so I'm going to set up a new folder, CIT 93 FA 17. Okay, so now that I have that folder in here, I want to actually now switch to, v to VS Code. So since we last talked, after installing it, I decided just to make an icon right on my taskbar. So I always have it, and it's easy for me to get to. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open it up because I have it running, and this nice welcome screen is here. Uh, I'm going to use the built-in terminal for uh, VS Code. Okay, So if you do View, you go Terminal. Um, when I did this the first time, honestly, I'll show you over here it said PowerShell. So if you get that, just hit plus here, add a terminal, find bash. And then this will be basically the same thing as when I showed you before when I was coming through here. Matter of fact, it's over here running git bash. It's, the, it's actually the same thing. It's just integrated into your editor so you don't have to move between things. Okay. All right, so uh, the first thing you want to do here is an LS. Okay, so this will, depending on various things that are set up on your computer, and again, make sure you're in bash, it'll show you the directory. So I can see, but by the way, you can also be, do PWD, and it shows me I'm on the C drive and users in my user account. All right, so um, in this case, I'm going to do CD. Uh, and when you're doing this on the Windows side, not on the Mac side, you have to do quotes, my documents. Because when there's spaces in files, um, it makes you do it in quotes. So now I've changed to my, uh, my documents directory. And now when I do ls, it's going to list those directories that I was just showing you. And a few other files, uh, mostly because of the way Windows is organized. But really, these are the files that we were seeing right when we were looking right here. OK, so back here, now what you're going to do is you're going to change to your CIT 93 or what I would call your root, right, uh, directory. Right? So this is where we're going to start from here, because now from here on, this is where we're going to create your repo. Okay. So, But before I do that, I want you to do git status. So git status should give you this message. Don't, And when it says fatal, don't think it's horrible. It's just saying there's no repo here. Okay. Because what we're about to do is going to take what has already been set up on GitHub for you, and it's going to clone it. So let me move over to that interface for a minute and just show you what I mean here, okay? So in GitHub, once you log in, and let me just get back to the, the main login right here, right? So normally you come into your own user, uh, your own uh, place in GitHub that has your username. But through the process of me creating, you got you each a private repo, you will be invited into the CIT 93 course repo. Okay, so if you click into there, you won't see what I see, don't worry, but you should see your CIT 93 and then your name, so or your username, your GitHub username. 
Okay, so in here I've set up two files. This one is just a default file that GitHub sets up, and then I set up a git ignore. So hopefully you have some exposure to git. So git is locally what we're doing to track your files that you code in, and then uh, we add those uh, into your repo, we stage them, and then we commit them into your repo, and then we push them to GitHub. So Git is a local software that we use for version control. Uh, and you'll do this today, so you'll get this experience of doing it. But the reason I say this is that the Git ignore file, which you could see just by clicking on it, is I've already set it up. I don't know why. There it is my mouse uh, running in this virtualized environment having fit. But what you can see is I've already set this up for VS Code. Now the nice thing here, and I recommend you uh, edit this file if you're using another editor, and then just go search uh, for git ignore and your editor and you will find good examples of standard uh, uh, code that you would place in here and all you'd have to do you know is get rid of this code and paste it in but it also won't hurt for this to come in no matter what editor you're using okay so I'm gonna have you back up one directory that are one uh, level here because what you want to do now is we're going to clone this so you want to come over to clone download and if it's on use SSH like this just click to use HTTPS and then select that and copy it. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to clone. We're going to take the repo that is here, and we're going to clone it on our local systems. And I just find for most students, this is an easier way to do it. I'm telling you, you'll see different ways of doing it. This to where you initialize uh, repos locally, and then you push them. There's just there's many ways to do this, but we're going to do it in this process. So now I'm going to switch over, uh, switch back to VS Code. Okay, so now what I have here is I'm going to do a command called, and this is really important that you're in this directory because what's going to happen is now it's going to create a directory in this process, and that directory will be the repo, what is also housing the repo. So we're going to do git clone, and now I'm going to paste. And so what this will be was whatever you copied from their website. Now when you hit enter here, you're most likely going to have to log in with your username and password for GitHub. And that's actually a good thing because what this is doing is it's setting up the connections between your local computer and GitHub. Now when I did this before, I got a little bit of an error saying it couldn't create a directory, but it did it anyway. So let's see what it does this time. So it's cloning, and actually it did give me that, but actually it created it, so it's really funny. So I'm going to go ahead here, and I'm going to do, I'm going to log in with my GitHub login. I'm going to actually give it my password for GitHub. And when it does that, then it clones, it unpacks, grabs it. And so the way I can say authorizing. Let's see, actually, because I got this message before, I'm hoping you don't, but I'm going to do a ls, and even though I got it, it still created the repo, uh, and in this case, a directory that is housing that. So now I can do change directory, real waller. Cool, and now I'm in the repo, and I can see the readme file. Interesting, you don't see the git ignore file because it's somewhat hidden away. Not completely, you'll see it again in a minute, but I just want you to see this. And notice too, in this case, um, again, in the Mac it'll look a little different, but you uh, should get on the Windows side something that says master, so we are on the master branch of this repo. Okay, so now, now we're actually going to uh, create some directories, and I'm going to show you different ways you can do this. So in uh, the instruction, um, oh, let's do that. Actually, let's do a git status. So now that we have it and we're in the directory, and if you do a git status, it should tell you, right, you're on the master branch, you're good to go. Right, you have everything you need, um, you're clean, which means no changes, and you will see this change as we do the work that we're about to do. Okay, so going back here, uh, good, and now we're going to create uh, four folders inside of our repo, apply, develop, learn, and practice. Now there's m different ways you could do this, we could actually do it manually. Uh, we could do it by, because now that we're in that directory, I think I'm going to show you because it will actually show up, there's 
many different ways as you probably know on your computer um, people could go into this directory because now if you go in here into here you will see those files and you can create folders here um, but you can also just do it here uh, I'm going to do the first one. I'm going to do mkdir. So this is the command line uh, um, command to create a directory. So I'm going to do this because I'm in the Rio Waller my repo. I'm going to do apply mkdir. MK, sorry, dir learn. Okay. So now that I've created two of them this way, I'm going to show you the other way. And I found this to be a little buggy, so I just warn you, but uh, just it's good to know. So what I'm going to do here, sorry, let me back up. Now I'm in VS Code, I'm going to open folder. And what I'm going to open is that folder that is the root, what I've been referring to as the root. And when I open this up in here, now I have, I can see, and if I drop this down, I can see that I have those two directories. Now I would recommend you not um, create the folders by opening that. I did that before and it created a little bit of a little bit of a craziness, but we got I got through it. But I just recommend for now, for this st stage, you open up the root and then in here we can do the steps. So I can do a new folder in here and I can do practice and I can do another new folder and I'm gonna go develop. Okay. So oh oh very nice. So see what happened there was it thought I was in it felt it said because I was had that active, it placed it there. I should be able to, yeah, see what I did there is I dragged it up and so I placed it in the right folder or the right location. Because that can happen when you're working in VS Code and you're creating folders, that can happen. But again, however you want to create it, I want you to create, right, those four folders. And now I want you to create a file that is going to be your index file for your repo. So when I hit, I'm going to do this, I'm going to hit new folder, now when I, or sorry, new file. When I do that, I want to make sure I'm in this Rio Waller, your repo name. Otherwise, it'll create it in one of the subdirectories, and that's not what you want. We'll create another file, in, other files in here. So in here, I'm going to create a new f file, okay? I'm going to call it index.html. Couple things here. Immediately, VS Code said I know what kind of file this is based on the extension. Okay, it placed it into the root. Now, the way I can tell that is if I roll that up, right, these are in the root, and then I have four folders in there. Okay, so now I have my first file, which, by the way, I haven't done anything else, right? But I want you, to, I want you to see as we go through this. And there's actually a keyboard shortcut for my integrated terminal. So now in my integrated terminal or in my git bash, I'm going to do git status. Ah, I know it right now it won't work. Now how, let's see if you know why it gave me invalid. Because I hadn't changed in to my uh, repo directory. Now when I do git status, good. So it already knows, hey, you have a file in here. Red means it has is something new. It's not tracking it. It's giving me a message. Okay, that you, you're going to do that. So let's go ahead and do this uh, step. So we're going to do git add index.html. So this adds it into our local repo. I'm going to do, and by the way, get used to using the up arrow here because then you can repeat these commands. So now uh, git saying, hey, I see you have a file you've added. This is great. So it's staged. So when you add it, it's staged. And so what we could do is commit it. So we'll commit it in a minute. Okay, so let's go ahead and add something in here. So hopefully you've had a little HTML and CSS and you know about um, Emmet. So I'm just going to put an explanation point and a tab. And what that does is it creates the standard, uh, the template uh, for HTML files, which is awesome. Uh, and by the way, if I come down here, right now in this it, it install there is a way to say automatically save on my Mac side I already have that set up but I need to come over here and hit save and that saves it right so when and, and I'll, sh I'll find the setting in a little while I'll show it to you but sometime I will show you how to automatically save because trust me it's just so much easier if you don't have to so now I'm going to do ls right so sorry get status Right, so now it says it can tell I've modified that. Right, so um, now you don't have to do this as you know, just do it 
uh, kind of along with me and then you'll get used to the flow that we're talking about. So in here, in the write-up, I wanted you to do an H1. So I'm going to do H1 tab and immediately it creates the tags I need for an H for my H1, my beginning and ending tag. Right? And I'm going to do an unordered list. Oh, interesting, I've had this happen, <laughs> is that the Emmet gets confused with something else. So I'm going to do undo here. And then I've noticed that if I hit escape, I have to find the trick to this because I have ran into this on the Mac side as well, is that it didn't actually undo the Emmet commands. So I'm going to do an unordered list, and then I'm going to do li, and then in this case I could do times four and then it would create four LIs. Okay, so then here we would just place those directories. Apply, right? Uh, let's do it in the error where it's develop. Okay, and again we'll be modifying this throughout um, the semester. Learn and practice. Okay, cool. Cool, so really that's all we need to do for now for the file. So we'll go ahead and do um, get status again. Okay, cool. So it's still saying, hey, you've got some modifications. So we can say, yeah, let's go ahead and do uh, get add again. And later you can do a wild card, so it just adds everything that you have in there. And now we're going to do, now that we have our file staged, now we're going to do our first commit. So this actually places it in, it commits it into the repo. When it's staged, it's just on the way to get there, so it's one of the steps. So now we'll do a git commit, index.html-m. Do this really carefully, okay? Open quotes. Now, do it very carefully, and I'm going to say... Uh, adding index html and actually I shouldn't have copied I shouldn't have capitalized that okay now I'm just using my arrow keys here uh, I would say the first time you do this just do it slowly and carefully and you'll be fine so now we added that into there and so now when we do get status we will see that cool we actually have that um, we're clean everything all the changes that we've done are in there so now what we're going to do is actually do a git push um, so i'm going to do a git push now this is actually going to take the code from my local system and i want you to see that everything out on here out on my repo right so everything out on my repo is still what it was before because all the work i've been doing has been local okay so coming back over here if i do a git push so what it should be doing here is it's going to take all those changes that I've done and it's writing it up to um, the repo. Cool. Now how do I know? Is I go back over here and if I just refresh this I will see that I just have the index file. Now how many are wondering why I don't see the subdirectories? Oh, the reason you don't see the subdirectories is until you add something into the subdirectories they don't show up. So as we add things into the subdirectories, they will show up. All right, let's see how far we got here. Uh-oh, let me go back here. Go back to our course. I think we're about halfway through, so we're getting there. Uh, again, these are, you know, th this is such an important, these first assignments, all of them are, but, all, you know, it's really good uh, to know how to walk through this. So we did this, we added, and we committed into the local repo. So now what we're going to do is we're going to install a, um, a node package called browser sync and if you look on page 15 of the big nerd ranch you will see how to do this okay so i'm going to pause for just a second and get those commands ready okay so before we install it i want you to know before you install any npm module okay and this is node package manager and this is the only one i think we're going to do this semester but if you continue on next semester to take 94 you'll be doing a lot more with uh, npm uh, node package manager so just search for npm 
browser sync and you will get to this website right so this is the location of documentation um, gives you the command you're going to use I'm going to show you how to do it globally with a flag and the flags are just in the command line you give it a, a flag that tells it how you want it to install um, so there's different ways to run browser sync uh, but basically what it's going to do is it allows you to see your file uh, now some uh, in, editors already have a built-in uh, server. I'd recommend you do this step even if you're using one that does just because I think this one works the best of all the ones that I've seen. So here's the command uh, that you need to do. npm space install space dash g space browser dash sync. Now by the way this is on page 15 and I recommend you doing a little more reading here to do this and when you hit enter here you're gonna it'll go it's gonna go through a process um, and when it finishes as long as it doesn't finish an error you might get a warning I did get a warning but go ahead and hit enter here and do that now if you if it in if it ends with an error there is some some warnings over on page 14 about something called sudo um, SUDO, which is this super user, and it may ask, it will ask you to log in as the user on your computer. Now, I hope it doesn't. Uh, I know for me, this is something I've been reading more about lately is why you don't want that to happen. And it basically means that wherever it's installing these, you don't have access to. But for this particular one, you know, if you need, if you get an error, that's one thing to try is you do sudo and then you do npm install. Again, the flag is to install it globally. That means no matter where you're going to, um, other projects you will do, you will have it. And then the name of the uh, package. Okay, so again, read more on page. Uh, again, you should hopefully have been to chapter 15 already. Okay, so now, now that you have that done, if you have any errors, again, reach out. I'm going to actually move over in the book, and I recommend you go with me to actually the next so I have it in the documentation here uh, I save wow it keeps keeps moving on me I wonder why it keeps going back somewhere else I must be clicking on it must be why okay so here under our steps I'm actually going to go to the page where we're actually going to run it so that it runs the uh, setup or it runs the, the actual server here we go, 27. I thought that's what it was. Okay, so on page 27, you will see now if you want to start the server, the command line you would need to do that. So we're going to actually do that here. Okay, so we're going to go browser. Now you have to have successfully got this installed. That's why sync, sync. Okay, uh, dash dash server. You can see why after you do a command one time, it's great to have that. It's going to say open in a browser. I'm going to tell it to do Google Chrome. It's basically the browser I want it to open. Okay. And I'm going to do dash dash files. Um, now in this case, I don't have any uh, CSS yet, but I'm going to go ahead and tell it uh, to pull style sheets dot style dot CSS. This is the exact command that you see on that page, comma star.html end of quotes ah, let's see here so this is where you start troubleshooting to figure out where you typed wrong so let me pause and figure that out so it was really funny I forgot the start and as soon as I went back and modified it it said oh yeah we're gonna allow it okay and then we have to just tell it so for my browser particular browser environment it just is not able to instantly load it so all I'd have to do here is just go localhost copy that okay I'm gonna copy this right here control C open up my browser go to a new tab control V I will do a little playing uh, with that to actually make sure that it should um, in fact, let's make sure here. Localhost internals. Let me try something real quick. Oh, it does show browser sync there, and it does show hosting in that location. Okay. Oh, yeah, I was thinking, wait a minute. Do I have. Ah, 
My, I was thinking, why didn't my index file show up? It's because I didn't save it. So now when I come here, ah, it shows up. <laughs> so that was a fun step. Okay. All right, cool. So this is, I know it's a lot and watching me do it can get overwhelming. So you, you take it a chunk at a time, right? Uh, so in this case, I'm going to do a little, after we're done, as I'm going to do a little uh, figuring out why on the command, which by the way, if you want to stop it, it's control C, I believe. Control C, control C. Watching files. Hmm, one of these. That's what happens when you get impatient. Again, my system running a little slower in the environment. Uh, I finally, I think, Control X um, or C got it out. But I'm just going to go back and show you the command, right? So browser sync start. Uh, that was the one thing I forgot. And I just used my arrow keys to go back and start that up. Okay. So. Um, I will, like I said, I'm not going to do it right now, but I will later go figure out what I need to do here uh, in order to get that um, browser to actually just start up automatically. But it's fairly easy to just go to the location and you'll go to the external. Um, in this case, you'll go to the external. You'll go to the external command. I'm just going to scroll up and show you that. Right. So you just copy and paste that into your browser or you can do it there as well. Okay, let's look at our instructions and see where we're at. So now uh, what you're going to do, is, and I'm going to actually let you do these next parts on your own because I think it's good exercise, is I'm going to have you go download uh, from the Big Nerd Ranch, uh, and I'll just show you, you know, go search Big Nerd Ranch. Uh, when you go to their site, you're going to see download solutions for the exercises. Um, you'll download a zip file. So again, I'm going to have you, this is good experience to do this on your own. Uh, in any operating system, you can uh, open it. And in this case, if I'm on Windows, it shows me the compressed file. So I would need to extract it. On the Mac side, if you actually open it, it automatically unzips itself and extracts it so you don't have to. But when you extract all, uh, what you'll end up getting, and I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again is you're going to get in your downloads for me a subdirectory called front end development and then if you go front end development okay go into there and then go into we're going to do the autogram first oh no sorry my bad go into book solutions go into chapter four not chapter five uh, for some reason they did, uh, anyway, this chapter four, make sure, because when I look at your code that you've put up, this is what I'm going to make sure you have. So then we have this autogram. So uh, this is what I want you to place into your repo and you can either copy it into there um, and actually, or you could uh, actually just take this directory right here uh, and place it into uh, your repo under, and this is important, Okay, so let's let's go back and show you this. So in this case, the uh, code that we're going to be doing is under the apply. Okay, so what you would do here is under this directory, uh, you could do it whichever way you want uh, to take that autogram directory. Okay, and it would be listed then under apply. Okay, and then it would have with it these this folder, this uh, sheet. Uh, this icon and that index. Okay, so that's what you should have in your local system. And matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and pause. I'm not going to walk you through it because I want you to do that. And I'll just show you what mine looks like. Okay, so I finished that. Um, and I did most of it, honestly, through just the browser. Uh, the, sorry, for File Explorer. Uh, just having two uh, File Explorers open. So I just opened uh, a new window, uh, a new one, and so I had two, and I just kind of dragged and copied uh, across. So under the apply, autogram, image, uh, which should have, in this case, five uh, otter images, uh, style sheet, which should have style CSS, and an index file, okay? So now what's cool is because of the way you've done this, uh, let's, I'm going to go back because, let's see, do I still have my server running? Well, it looks like I might. 
I don't. So I'm going to restart my server. All right. I'm going to go back down here. I'm just going to restart. Oh, make sure I do the right one. That's the one. Okay. And again, I'll probably get that error message that I'll fix on the Windows side. But until then, I can go here, go ahead and hit enter. Now, what you can also do is in here, update this. We'll do this. I'm not going to make you do it today, but you, this will start to make sense that now you can do otter gram. And when you do that, you should be able to see index.html. And actually, it should have come up without that. So let me make sure I'm in the right directory here. Apply otter gram. There's the index file, right? So if you've done this right, which looks like I got to do just a little bit of troubleshooting, it should be my. Well, it should have worked. I'm not sure why it didn't. Oh, I can see why. How many got it? Apply. Okay. Ah, so when you do that step, then. You should see this. Now, I can tell right now, the other thing that happened is my CSS file didn't come across, right? So I'd want to look at that. I'd want to look at my code and see if I could troubleshoot and maybe it was a reference or maybe it was the way I did the um, command here uh, because it looks like that's right. Uh, that's just a CSS file. So I'll play with that and troubleshoot it. So these are just things that you might run into. And I'm guessing, my guess here, is the way that I have browser sync running. So I did do a little more troubleshooting and I found a couple things that I did in error, which is always something that happens. So well, not always, hopefully, but you know, it does happen. So one thing was on my browser sync, I didn't have, I didn't have style sheets. I had style sheet, but I noticed I had also on my folder. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna rename. I'm going to call it style sheets. Okay. And then I, so I had to run browser sync again. I did do a little reading that said if you are, have Chrome as your default browser, you don't have to call it. Matter of fact, it talks about it in the book. So you can try that as well. So now if everything went okay, um, and I just did some troubleshooting, and you can always, um, you know, it's, this is a learning process. Oh, good. So now I can tell, and this is the way it should look for you, um, if you got everything working. Okay, so I decided instead of ending, I would just pause and do that troubleshooting because that is the kind of stuff that, you know, if you run into it, uh, reach out for help as soon as you can. So my two mistakes were, one, that I when I typed the command, so browser sync start space dash dash server dash, so it says start a server call the dash dash browser, use these files, which is anything in the CSS and the HTML. So in looking in that directory. So that's the command. Again, you should see it in the book. So hopefully you got all the way through that. Again, reach out for help if you need it. Talk to you later. Bye. Oh, make sure you commit, add and commit these into your repo.